Hi everybody! Today I am going to be showing how to make a layered flower bead. These are also known as dahlia beads or on mandrel implosion flowers. Uh, so it all depends on who you talk to. But this is a revisit video um, from one of my older blurry videos from 2010-2011. And so I'm just remaking some of these to uh, voice them over and actually make a much sharper image for you guys. So I'm just going to make a small round bead here. Uh, so I'm just going to start with a, a tiny donut shaped lay, uh, bead of clear. So a very small bead on the mandrel. And I'm using, I believe, a 3 16 mandrel. And I'm going to round that out a little bit and get a nice shape going. You always want to keep your shape nice and round as you go through these beads to keep all the stamen and the petals and everything all even. So every time you put on a layer, you want to make sure it's nice and rounded out until you, before you put on the next layer. So I'm just adding some tiny dots of a nice yellowy orange color called Harvest, and this is from CIM. Very small dots, and I'm putting six or eight dots around to make the stamen. And I place them a little bit to the left of the center, just so they'll be more visible in the final bead. You don't have to do this, of course. You could put them more in this, you could put them right in the center, or you can make them lower down in the bead so they'd be You'd, I'd put it on the other side. So basically, the hand that's holding my mandrel, my right hand, is the bottom of the bead, and towards my left hand is the top. So now I'm just encasing those dots. And you want to make sure that your bead on the mandrel is nice and cool, so those dots do not distort when you layer on the glass. And I also try to make my clear. I try to heat it up a lot so it's nice and soupy at the tip so it kind of lays on very nicely without me having to really push the glass on. I want to lay it on more so than push it because I do not want to distort any of those dots. And so I'm just going to round this out again. Like I said, after every layer you want to make sure you get it nice and rounded again. And the bead is already starting to widen and flatten out and getting wider than the starting bead. So these stamen are already starting to stretch out into elongated ovals here, as you see. And as you go along and add more and more glass, they will get thinner and thinner and become more um, stripe-like and stamen-like. So I'm going to be using two different blues for my petals. This is Aloha Blue, which is a really nice color that's between like dark sky blue and turquoise. It's kind of like right in the middle. It's a really pretty blue. And I'm adding about, I think, five dots around and putting them halfway down the stamen. So I'm kind of, this, they're kind of towards the opposite side of the bead. They're a little bit, um, from this view, they're a little bit to the left of the center of the bead. And I melt those in partially just to make sure, they're kind of like a little bit more than halfway melted in, just to make sure they're all about the same size because you can always add a little more glass if they're not. And now I'm adding CIM's Electric Avenue Blue and I'm putting these dots a little bit towards the bottom of the petal so that there will be more of that aloha blue, the lighter blue, towards the tips of these petals versus, you know, putting them right in the center. And so I round it out again. Want to make sure you get it nice and rounded. And I have the little dot dots for petals on there. And now I have to let it cool again before I actually put on my layer of clear because I do not want to move and distort those dots. So I'm heating up my clear rod 
and getting a, see a nice dollop of clear and I could just kind of smoosh it around very gently so that I'm not distorting any dots. So that's basically how you make the different layers. And I sped this video up now so you don't have to sit there and watch all this boring activity. And so I'm just smooshing down that clear to make sure all the dots are totally encased. You really don't have to push the clear all the way down to the mandrel or anything. You just want the dots totally covered and encased or else you're going to move them and the dot, the color will start to try to come up to the surface if it's not totally covered. So there is the first layer of petals with the stamen. And now I'm going to put the second layer on. So you basically do the same thing, except for I'm like halfway down the petal and also in between the previous row. So five petals again, in between the other five petals that are already there, and halfway down it. So you're partially covering the previous petal. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And just an FYI on these, if I wanted to make one of those longer uh, pineapple beads, they're sometimes called, but they're uh, longer layered ones, you know, like they could be one or two inches tall with all these layered dots going down like are, that are on these. I would have started, instead of with just a donut bead, I would have started with a long barrel. And I would have put my stamen at one end of the barrel and put the dots going down, you know, working my way down one row after another to make a longer petal bead or one of those pineapple beads, pine cone beads they're called. So it would be like the same thing. But this one's just a round bead. And so now as I put this on, the petals are bigger. So each layer, your petals are just a little bit bigger. And so I needed two layers to encase you know, two swipes around or coils around to encase the dots totally. And I'm going to melt those in again too. And even out the bead, make sure it's nice and even. And a lot of people, they use uh, silver glass in these beads, which are really cool. So you can do that too. You can use any colors you want. And so now I got a nice glowing bead. And I want to add a little more glass. I want a little separation, a little more separation between this petal layer and the next petal layer. So I'm just adding a little more glass around the center. Make sure you get it all nice and rounded out. Try to get it fairly even, and it's getting even fatter than it was. And now I'm going to do the third layer. Now this third layer, I'm going to make the petals just slightly different, and some people do this. I'm just showing another way. So I start out doing the same thing. I have them about halfway down the previous row of petals and in between. And I'm going to melt them down. I'm going to put the same colors on as previously and melt them all the way in to be dots. But after that, I am going to actually um, put dents in them with my razor blade. And so this is just something uh, some people do. And so I'm going to actually dent the base color of Aloha Blue, and I'm kind of going across from back to front with the cut mark, and it's actually pulling some of that dot a little bit upward to make a tiny point at the top, as well as putting that dent in there. And so basically what this does is it allows the transparent color, and in this case it's my 
um, Electric Avenue Blue, it allows that transparent color to melt in to the dent and actually have a thicker line going along the center of your petal. And also it points your petal out a little more. You have a little more of a point to your petal. And so some people do it this way, so I just wanted to show a different way to make your petals. You can only also pull these out actually with a stringer or something. You can pull them out to make a point, but sometimes that's not very uh, effective to, to make it really nice and even unless you're very steady with your hand and really know what you're doing. But you could do that too. You can actually pull them out and taper them into points. So I'm just melting that all in now and that blue is seeping in to those little troughs and dents that I made with the X-Acto knife and actually leaving a darker line of color in the very center. So let's we'll see if I zoom in. It's kind of hard to see that darker line. You can see it a little bit. It's darker than the outer line. And there's little points at the top of those petals. And so that's basically the effect I wanted. And so now I'm going to encase and clear again. And these petals, even the inside ones that were just round, they are going to elongate out and actually point. The Even the inside ones are going to get kind of pointy um, at the end when I finish shaping this bead. So it's all it all depends on what kind of effect you want. And so making sure all the dots are encased. So these dots were even larger than the previous ones because as my bead gets larger, the dots also get larger. So I'm just tamping them down, making sure they're totally encased at the bottom. And the, I knew they were encased at the top, but just making sure. And now I'm gonna round it out. And you can see it's kind of really wonky there on the one side. I believe that was just a little thinner amount of clear there. So I'm gonna add just a tiny swipe of additional clear around there. And now you can see it's a lot straighter now. It looks a lot straighter. And so I didn't want my petals to distort and actually move all to one side because I was lacking some of the clear glass there. So I added a little more to make sure it stays nice and even and roundish. So I'm gonna to totally heat this bead up now and make it more round. And so what I do is I focus on one side or the other. This time I'm focusing on the bottom and I'm holding my mandrel a little bit on a downward angle. It's not much, it's only like 20 or 30 degree angle. And it's the glass is drooping down to widen out that bead. And so now I'm doing the same thing on the top I'm heating the top half of the bead and I'm holding it a little bit upward on an angle so that the glass will move forward towards the front of the bead or the top of the bead. And so basically when you're melting glass, you want your mandrel held horizontally to get your glass to roll out and even out on a centered axis of your mandrel. You want to hold it totally horizontal. But if you want to move that glass, that's when you use gravity and hold it to one side or another, you know, up or down in the flame to move it in the direction you want to move it. And so that's what I'm basically doing here. I'm trying to round this bead out and make it more round and elongate the petals. And so I'm focusing on the front again, and it's kind of hard to see here, but I was holding it upward on a little bit of an angle, like a 20 degree angle, just so that the glass would move. And so now I got a fairly rounded, it's still kind of fat donut shape, but it's fairly rounded. And you could see that all the petals are longer. And I will zoom in even further and show additional <laughs> detail. And so here's the top of the bead and you can see actually all those layers and the petals. It looks kind of weird from this angle, doesn't it? But you see all those layers and the petals in there. But here's the side view. And you could see even my just regular dots in those center layers of petals are even pointed. 
So they do actually elongate out and get pointy, even when they're just dots. So just an FYI there. So however you want to make your petals and whatever colors you want to use. So for this last layer that I'm going to be doing, and sorry my hand gets in the way because I'm left-handed, but I am going to actually place some petals on the surface. So some people actually put petals, or you could put other decoration too, on the surface of your bead. And so I'm just going to place some petals on the surface. And I want to leave them a little bit raised. So this will give me a little bit of texture on my bead instead of just being a smooth, plain round one. So I, I needed, some of the dots were a little smaller, so I needed to add a little more glass. So I'm going to partially melt these in. I'm not going to melt them all the way in. So now just like the other petals, I am going to put the transparent or semi-transparent Electric Avenue Blue on top of those dots but towards the center. And sorry, I'm kind of blocking it a little bit, but it'll come into view soon. See, I turn it there. So you can see they're towards the bottom section of the blue. They're not directly in the middle of the lighter blue dots. And so I'm just going to melt those a little bit. Get them all melded into one big dot. And then I'm going to flatten them. Because I don't want to melt these petals all the way in, I want them raised. So I'm just going to help it along a little bit by flattening them with my tool. So then I, they're evened out so I can pull them into points. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to pull these into points and have little tapered petals on the outside. So I zoomed in for you here and just heat one dot and just pull it out. I'm using the same stringer that the center dots are made out of. Just pull it out, just slowly and gently, as far or as little as you want. Try to make them all about the same taper and the same evenness. And pulled out about the same distance. And so there we are. We have the little pointed, pulled out points of raised petals on the surface. And you could do these with like a, a totally different color of petal than the what's encased inside your bead. So it's whatever color combos you want to use for these. And so now I'm just adding little dots at the very top of those petals just to add a little more decoration, a little more uh, variance in the top of the bead. And I'm going to melt those in, and I want to try to melt them all in at the same uh, distance, so they're all melted in evenly. And sometimes it's a little difficult um, when you're just spinning your mandrel around. Some dots get a little more heat than others, even though you don't want it to happen. So I'm just spot heating a few of those dots there, because they're not melted in as much as the others. So I'm just going through and trying to get each dot melted in the same distance. And so that's basically the raised petals on the outside with the underlying beads, or petals, sorry, underneath. So the last thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of leaf stringer at the bottom for like the little leaves at the bottom of the flower. And you don't have to add these, of course, but I'm just going to show, and I, bro I broke the rod there, I'm just going to show a couple ways to make leaves. One is you get a little ball of glass on your stringer, and then you push it down and then pull out. So you push down and then you pull that out into a point, and it's like insta-leave. It's, it's automatically a leaf right there. You might have to pull out the tips a little bit more, but you already have a leaf shape. And then the other couple ways you can make a leaf is you just add 
a couple dots there, or, you know, one dot for each leaf. So I'm doing two here. And I flatten them down just like I did with the petals. And then after they're flattened, then you pull it out into a point, just like I did the petals there. So it all depends on what you're comfortable with of how you want to make your little leaves. And so, sorry, I'm going a little off screen because I uh, moved my camera angle to zoom in. So I'm kind of a little off the top there. But I will actually come into view soon. And so there is the finished bead. And there's the stamen and all the petals. I hope you enjoyed watching.